If sustainability is our fundamental goal, then the concept of ESG is what gives us the tools and the framework we need to guide our actions. There is no economic prosperity without environmental conservation, social harmony, and robust governance. To achieve long-term economic success, we need to integrate all three elements into our business decisions. The ultimate aim of green banking and finance is to build a society with a sustainable future. This means redirecting lending and investment to projects, companies, and activities that support renewable power, sustainable transport, and the green buildings and the infrastructure, and so on. Asian Financial Forum has always been a platform for the brightest and the sharpest minds from the East and the West to discuss and share ideas about how to tackle global challenges. Building a new normal that supports a more sustainable future while also grappling with the immediate problems we face will require collaboration, cooperation, and coordination from all parties. I'm looking forward to learning more about how we can translate our common goal of building a more sustainable future into concrete actions. Why not? We borrow the planet from our children and also our grandchildren, and we have to return it in a better condition. So we can make a difference while sustainable investing. 2022 is a year of two halves, with higher rates of economic growth and inflation in the first half leading to a lower rate of growth and also inflation. Diversification and also active risk management is important to navigate the volatile market in the midst of geopolitical uncertainty and also the pandemic. After two years of pandemic, we will see the normal rates of economic growth and also the inflation. So it's time to align our portfolio with the key trends that will impact the world, the technology disruption. And one of the very important topics is the sustainable investing and ESG. In the trying year of 2020, Hong Kong's financial services managed to record a 2.9% growth in terms of value adding and 7.5% of total population. Looking forward, I'm sure that in 2022, the year of the tiger, Hong Kong's financial services will continue to be a blessed land for crouching tigers and hidden dragons to thrive and prosper. Data is the new goal. A lot of progress has been made in fostering free flows of people, goods, and capital. The next topic to consider for financial services in the GBA is to capture the strategic value of enhanced data free flow across boundaries. With tremendous efforts and progress seen in the past few years, I look forward to learning more from the distinguished speakers and guests about how we can take this one step further to contribute to the global effort towards a better, greener future. Faced with opportunities and challenges in today's China market, aligned with our purpose, we are bringing together a community of solvers with multidisciplinary knowledge and expertise to keep abreast of the times. Guided by our new equation strategy, we are prioritizing investments in five key strategic areas. Build trust and deliver sustained outcomes.
。我哋都知道世界面对紧嘅问题，每日都有数以百万计嘅声音话俾我哋知，我哋系时候要采取行动。我哋需要一个计划，一个崭新想法，为人类带嚟可持续发展嘅未来。我哋需要一个爱护地球嘅商业计划去解决问题。汇丰承诺投入七千五百亿。至一万亿美元喺未来九年推动企业实践绿色转型，并支持全球客户同佢哋嘅业务伙伴发展低碳经济。汇丰嘅目标系喺二零三零年前，无论营运同供应链方面都达到零碳排放，并帮助所有客户喺二零五零年前实现相同目标。喺香港，汇丰嘅专业团队。透过绿色融资方案，一直协助唔同嘅企业实践绿色营商计划。我哋亦全力策动汇丰探索洁净水域计划，以四艘太阳能小船投入清理海洋塑胶垃圾。我哋相信企业可以携手一齐解决地球问题。加入我哋，开展绿色营商计划，一起重商爱地球。Since you've been in Hong Kong for a long time, people are very fast here. Uh, what's your definition of happiness? The Chinese word song is uh, super happiness. Family offices can basically run their businesses anywhere in the world. So why has Happiness Capital chosen Hong Kong? In three words, which three words sort of best describe Hong Kong as an international financial center? 我们为香港国际金融中心建设注入新动能，借区域化发展联通新商机，为智慧城市的构建创新金融科技，为地球的未来开拓绿色金融。中国银行，香港融通世界，造福社会。Can your investments have a positive impact on the world? From financing hospitals to funding clean energy to make electricity more accessible. And investing in innovative solutions to clean polluted marine habitats, our sustainable investments benefit you and parts of the world that need it most. We're Standard Chartered, and we're here for good. Faced with opportunities and challenges in today's China market, aligned with our purpose. We are bringing together a community of solvers with multidisciplinary knowledge and expertise to keep abreast of the times. Guided by our new equation strategy, we are prioritizing investments in five key strategic areas: build trust and deliver sustained outcomes. Welcome to the session Dialogue with Zhu Weimin. This session will be conducted in English. If you require simultaneous interpretation, please choose your preferred language by clicking the headset icon on top of the video screen. Mr. Zhu Weimin is the Vice Chairman, President, and CIO of China Investment Corporation. We're delighted to have invited Ms. Han Yi Lin, Chief Correspondent in Hong Kong, Yi Tai TV, to moderate the session. Without further ado, I'll now pass the time to Lin. Good afternoon. Welcome to the session and welcome to AFF 2022. I'm Hang Yu, Chief Correspondent in Hong Kong with Itai Media Group. This pandemic has changed everyone's life in all aspects and made us more aware of the importance of sustainable development. CIC China Investment Corporation is China's Sovereign Wealth Fund, which has proactively promoted sustainable growth and established the policy framework for advancing it. Today, we are honored to have Mr. Ji Wei Min, Vice Chairman, President, and CIO of China Investment Corporation, to share his insights about global economy and sustainable development. Good afternoon, Mr. Zhu. Thank you, Ling. It's great to join Asia Financial Forum. It's very nice to have this conversation with you. Although we can only talk online due to the pandemic, 
which has lingered for almost two years, that long enough to change us in a very dramatic way. So first of all, I would like to ask you, how do you think things are gonna go with the pandemic? And what is your reading on global economy overshadowed by the pandemic going forward? As we can see, COVID-19 is still with us today. And the people have different opinions on its impact on the global economy. Some believe the pandemic will end in 2022 and the world will be back to normal. But generally speaking, I'm afraid its impact will be felt for years to come. Last month, just when we thought since we were turning around, the Omicron variant hit. It's more contagious, hard to contain, and possibly more evasive for our immune system. As a result, we have seen a surge of new cases in some countries. The UK, France, and Italy all broken their single day records. The US is also approaching its historical peak. So even if the proportion of severe case may have come down, as the news reporter said, once the number of infections reach a critical mass, the virus will still greatly strain each country's medical resources. A long-term solution depends on effective vaccines and drugs. Governments and scientists around the world are making good progress here, but the availability and the fair distribution still cause concerns. I think the duration and the persistence of the impact remains uncertain. Despite of this, global economy was stronger than expected in 2021. In the first half of the year, we saw quick rebound of major economy and the world as a whole. The US, UK, and other developed countries even achieved a double-digit growth, a momentum that continued through the second half of 2021. As a result of labor shortage, supply chain bottlenecks, and the rising energy prices, we are seeing a significant change in global inflation. Notably, inflation in the US has hit 30-year high, and with high levels of national debt and high stock prices in the mix, the microenvironment has become more complex. The third downside factor is the widening gap between the emerging and the developing regions. In particular, major economies may readily adjust their microeconomic policies. The US Fed may start to raise interest rates in 2022, and the ECB has already hinted at slowing down its bond buying program. Historically, Fed's interest rates hike would likely trigger capital outflow and the depreciation in the emerging market, which would destabilize the international market. Lastly, the pandemic has obviously increased the social lift, populism, unilateralism, protectionism, isolationism, as well as geopolitical risks. As you have mentioned, global economy is showing signs of increased divergence, imbalance, and instability. Under such a circumstances, the international community is more focused on sustainable recovery. That's why we also discuss, discuss this topic here in AFF 2022 under the theme navigating the next normal towards a sustainable future. In your opinion, what actions need to be taken to achieve sustainable development? Thanks, Lin. Right now, the global economy is struggling to find its footing, and this issue affects all of us. I believe sustainable growth can only be achieved if the countries all make extensive structural changes, improve investment environment, and strengthen international cooperation. First, countries should enhance policy coordination to confront the challenges as one. In terms of pandemic control and public health, we should help each other and work together, rather than criticizing the origin of the virus and the distribution of the vaccine. Vaccines should be shared more extensively to make them more accessible to developing countries. In terms of micro policies, self-serving policies will only backfire. Policy coordination and international cooperation 
are needed to overcome the global public health challenges. Second, we must abandon unilateralism and protectionism and embrace multilateral cooperation. Last few years, we saw rise of unilateralism and protectionism, as well as the abuse of national security issues, which had a devastating effect on the global industrial cooperation and the division of labor. COVID-19 has further threatened the industrial stability and made cooperation even harder. It also highlighted the supply chain bottlenecks that denies quick solutions. For example, some countries conducted a review of supply chain in key industries. As a result, global chip shortages and the prices have surged, which has indirectly increased the global inflation. As another example, protectionism, the resurging pandemic, and the lack of coordination have disrupted the global logistics and the cost of product shortage, driving up prices, and generally destabilizing global economy. Third, we need to work on the investment environment to pave the way for sustainable growth. In recent years, we are seeing an excess of global liquidity on the one hand, and a significant funding gap for infrastructure, and a lack of support for the real economy on the other hand. Globally, capital flows has slowed tremendously, especially FDI, which is vital to long-term growth. This highlights market challenges that require better governmental coordinations. Countries should make the structural changes, abandon discriminatory laws, and generally build a more fair and open investment environment, so as to attract long-term capital and channel it towards the real economy to power sustainable growth. We know that CIC is a sovereign wealth fund. How can sovereign wealth funds promote sustainable development? And could you also share with us your insights about the status quo and prospects of sustainable investing in China? I think sovereign wealth funds are key source of long-term global capital and have been the key players in the development of the global financial market. Over the past decades, they have grown rapidly and are making a big impact on international market and capital flow. Especially since the global financial crisis, the total size of the sovereign wealth funds worldwide has doubled and is approaching the global size of alternative investment. They are particularly favored in some emerging markets, playing a bigger role in their economic and social development. Due to the long horizon, sovereign wealth funds are more favored in long-term and strategic investment, in particular equity, making them a vital source of long-term and stable capital. As the global economy continues to recover from the pandemic, larger institutional investors, such as sovereign wealth funds, are placing a greater emphasis on sustainable investment. According to a report, by Global Sustainable Investment Alliance, the global sustainable assets under management has surged in recent years, far outpacing the growth of the asset management industry as a whole. According to IFC, the scale of impact investment in 2020 was around 2.3 trillion US dollars, and the global issuance of green bonds, social bonds, and the sustainability bonds was around 1.3 trillion US dollars, an increase of 87% over 2019, with China's introduction of its twin goals of carbon peaking and carbon neutrality. Sustainable investment in China is also taking off. Sustainable investment has a promising future, but not without its challenges. For example, we currently have many ESG data providers, but the scope of coverage and data quality all vary, make it difficult to select the appropriate data set. We also have yet to develop a uniform ESG evaluation and rating methodology, meaning there is no single standard to assess the ESGness of a company. Lastly, to encourage ESG development in portfolio companies, investors need to be more than just a provider of capital. They should also encourage impact investment, 
through voting or engagement in corporate governance, which also requires them to find a suitable way to participate. A lot of work needs to be done by both regulators and institutional investors to address these issues. Policymakers and the regulators should first continue to enhance the information disclosure of sustainable investing. At present, information on sustainable investment is mainly disclosed on a voluntary basis. The information serves only as self-programmed label of sustainable investing with no numbers disclosed on the world's established standards. Over the past two years, green awareness is rising in China with relentless efforts made on realizing the twin goals of carbon peaking and carbon neutrality. China has become a pioneer in terms of some green policies. Several months ago, People's Bank of China released China's first guidelines on green finance, including the guidelines on environmental information disclosure for financial institutions and the environment equity financing tools. These guidelines, including the principles, format, and the requirement for information disclosure on sustainable investing. Going forward, we hope that the PBOC will continue to refine the guidelines in light of their implementation so as to build a quality information disclosure system that will act as a comprehensive, coherent, and a comparable measure of sustainable investing, as well as to provide sound standard for guiding and regulating information disclosure on sustainable investing. Second, policymakers should enhance top-down policy guidance. The assortment of ESG rating system adopted by regulators and the ESG rating agencies, combined with a lack of appraisal systems do not provide enough incentives to investors. We hope that regulators can enhance policy coordinations to create uniform rating standards and incentive mechanisms. Such as policy guidance will increase market share of sustainable investment and boost its healthy development. Institutional investors should do more on ESG investment especially in green and low carbon investment, minding the timeliness of investment and guarding against the risk amid the green transformation. This will help form a pattern where investment and the real economy are mutually reinforcing so as to promote sustainable economic development. Yes, thank you, Mr. Ju. Could you also share with us what's the plan of CIC in terms of sustainable development? And what plans will it make in the future? Sure. Thanks, Ling. I'm happy to share with you CIC's relevant practice. Since its establishment, CIC has consistently positioned itself as a responsible investor and proactively contributed to sustainable growth worldwide. In recent years, we have monitored the trends in sustainable investing extensively exchange views with the relevant institutions and establish the policy framework and the phase one plan for advancing it. Based on Pierce's approach and our own practice, we have formulated and released a sustainable investment policy in 2021, which shows our determination to promote sustainable development. Meanwhile, we have actively optimized our assets allocation to promote sustainable development while posting financial returns. We have, in the public market, we have set up a sustainable investing strategy and a climate improvement substrategy with green and low carbon assets at core. We also have invested in ESG indices to explore thematic investment opportunities. In the private market, we continue to expand investment in renewable energies and made a foray into green investment in physical assets and the pain industrial private equities. Going forward, CIC will further implement sustainable investing in the following three aspects. First, we'll explore thematic investment opportunities. In the public market, we'll launch a thematic equity mandate 
and continue to invest in ESG indices. And the private market will set the future direction for sustainable investment and continue to explore related opportunities with a focus on climate change. Second, we'll incorporate ESG factors into investment process. We'll weave ESG factors into investment activities from project screening and due diligence, slow evaluating and contracting, and on to post-investment portfolio management and deal exit. Third, we'll continue to collaborate with various stakeholders. We'll communicate with our peers and the relevant organization to keep track of the frontier ESG chance and to promote the development of sustainable investment in China. We'll leverage our strengths as a sovereign wealth funds and work with our partners to support the transition to a sustainable global economy. Thank you very much, Mr. Zhu. Thank you for sharing your valuable views on sustainable development. This is the end of this dialogue. I would also like to thank everybody online joining me. Please stay healthy, and I wish you a happy new year. Goodbye. See you next year.